Okay, uh, one final. Oh, sorry, uh, Dan. I'll just add to that. I think this question is about citizen science and how can people like yourself who know a lot of st different things can get involved. And I think there are lots of ways. There's not just loaning your computer to this search uh, as in SETI at home, but we have Stardust at home where you use your eyes and brains to find these particle, interstellar particles. The SETI League is a group of amateur astronomers and uh, engineers who build telescopes in their backyard. And, and uh, they're not very big telescopes, but they can look for very bright signals and they can look for kind of, uh, they can stare at things for a long time, which we can't do. Um, there are ways to uh, look uh, on our website and help us identify the best candidates and what's interference. And uh, the SETI Institute is doing some of that as well. Um, you can help us do programming. All our code is open source. And most of the code was written and developed and debugged by volunteers. And they help accelerate it, port it to different platforms. So there's a lot of things that people can do. You can also send money. <laughs> so uh, this will be the final question. But I think afterwards, we will linger on stage. And uh, you can come ask those questions that you were too embarrassed to ask out loud. OK, here you go. Uh, th thanks for the debate. It's, it's been really great. Uh, one, one thing that I think was curiously left out of both of your talks is, uh, I guess, the, the UFO phenomenon. And if you have an opinion, could you, could you please comment? Thanks. Well, um, let's see. I'll just say I, I did mention it in passing when I referred to the state of Nebraska. <laughs> uh, and, you know, one of the, 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 the troubles, as I think everybody here realizes, is it's very peculiar that every UFO sighting uh, ends up uh, as a photograph that shows a kind of a fuzzy blob and some, uh, you know, uh, farmer in, in Iowa says, oh, I saw the UFO and the bright lights were moving around and I'm sure it was a UFO. Um, and it's rather peculiar that if the aliens let themselves be seen by Iowa farmers, uh, how is it that, uh, you know, proper photographic equipment has never taken a good clear picture of the flying saucers. Uh, so that's a little odd. Uh, another thing is, of course, when, when the Nebraska farmers do get abducted, uh, somehow or other, the aliens are always uh, doing some kind of anal probe on those, <laughs> those poor Nebraska farmers. And why these advanced civilizations would have to use that particular entrance into the human body isn't entirely clear to me. You'd think they'd be a little bit more advanced than that. <laughs> So I'm, I, I think the scientific community remains slightly skeptical about most of those reports. <laughs> uh, can I just add to that? I, I, so even though I think the universe is, is likely to be teeming with life, uh, there's no evidence for that any of it is visited here. That, that, there's no good UFO evidence. And I, some of the reports are real. Uh, people see Aurora, and they see the space shuttle, and the space station going overhead and they get all excited and they think it's a UFO and that's actually the definition of UFO is unidentified flying objects so they're not, they're not wrong when they report this <laughs> stuff but they usually a lot of people will embellish you know um, their reports um, so some of it is real phenomena and, and uh, we get calls a lot uh, when when the when the when the space station is going over and when they're bright planets out some of it are deliberate hoaxes I think Von Donegan and others people have made alien autopsy movies and they uh, you know they they're they're it's deliberate but um, and then I, we know that a lot of it, it people's imaginations uh, it, a lot of the, these reports correlate very well with the movies and in literature nobody saw flying saucers before Jules Verne people used to see angels when Jules Verne came along and wrote about uh, flying cigars people saw cigars when he wrote about flying saucers people started seeing flying saucers when the uh, uh, I forgot in the movie where the toys went crazy, then people started seeing toys. Go, and, <laughs> and so it, a lot of it's kind of whatever's in the popular culture. So I, I think we're close to finishing. And could I say one last word? I, I don't think either one of us has quite done uh, a good job of, of uh, conveying one other message. And that is that here at UC Berkeley, uh, in conjunction with the SETI Institute, uh, we are attempting to construct by far the world's largest radio telescope that is specifically designed to detect the radio and television transmissions of advanced civilizations. This is called the Allen Telescope Array uh, uh, with generous donations from Paul Allen of Microsoft fame. And one of the realities is that this is an enormous engineering challenge, but it's also an enormous funding challenge. And right now the project is uh, mostly stalled for lack of funding. 
So we aren't doing a good enough job, uh, we homo sapiens anyway, in uh, uh, c consolidating our resources uh, to spend the, the, prop the proper amount of money to, to build the instruments we need to detect uh, advanced civilizations. And, and, the, and Berkeley with the SETI Institute and this Allen Telescope Array is by far, I think, our best chance of actually uh, detecting the, the advanced civilizations. Well, this was a fantastic discussion. If you'd like to, uh, to speak to us uh, afterwards, please come up. So let's uh, thank Jeff Marcy and Dan Werfheimer, please. Paul, could you thank uh, James and Andrew? Shake hands. Yeah. <laughs> and the cameras.